Okay, so that's all for the process of OSPF. But if we look at the detail, actually the OSPF works like this. The OSPF actually is a typical link state routing protocol, and they can be widely used within the interior gateway protocols in the industry. So they only work for single autonomous system. And OSPF version 2 actually worked for IPv4, and OSPF version 3 worked for IPv6. In this lecture, we will mainly talk about the OSPF version 2. And uh, OSPF actually works according to the link state uh, routing protocol. So they will exchange the link state, they will uh, set up a topology, they will calculate the shortest path tree, and um, finally they will calculate the routing table. A, one thing you need to know that is OSPF actually also supports the VLSM and route summarization. Okay, so let's look at an example of OSPF application. So if think of you are in a campus, uh, you want to set up a campus network, and you know that in campus there will be different buildings, and in different buildings there may have some local area network, and there will be the aggregation switch and the call switch to connect all these local area networks together. So where does the OSPF works on? Actually, the OSPF protocol works on the call switch and aggregation switch. You can think of all these switch as the router. And then they can coordinate with each other and to find the correct route for every packet going from or to the network. Okay, so before uh, introducing the detailed process of OSPF, let's first give some basic concepts. The first concept is area. The OSPF can work on an area, so we can identify an OSPF area and give the number of this area or area ID. So here, an area is considered as a logical group. They may not the real physical group. They may be part of a physical group or a sum, a summarize of multiple uh, physical group. It is only a logical group, and the group will have an area ID. Then another concept, which is router ID. For every router, they will have an ID. Yeah, this one, this one, this one. And typically, this router ID equals to their IP, and this router ID can be manually specified or automatically assigned. Another concept, which is the cost, because we need to calculate the shortest path. So the shortest path is in terms of the cost, right? Which have the minimum cost is called the shortest path. Then how to calculate the cost? Actually, in OSPF, they give us the metric. They define the cost value as the um, a certain con a constant over the interface bandwidth. So you can see that uh, if the bandwidth is very large, then the cost is very small. So the this link will have high probability to be selected. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, the bandwidth is is small, then the cost is very high. So typically, if it is a 100 megabps link, then the cost will be one. And if it is 1.5 mega, it is the cost is 64. Okay, so that's the definition of the uh, cost value. A, this cost uh, actually is a default reference value, but this can be reconfigured by administrator. Then if we are given the cost of each link. Actually, we can calculate the value of the path. Okay, so for this path, the cost actually is the sum of all the link costs. So for this path, it is 75. Okay, and within OSPF, there are a lot of different packet types. We will have the hello packet which is used for the routers to find his neighbor and set up the neighbor relationship. And they have the database description, which is used to describe the 
DSAs in the link state database. They will uh, share the information stored in the database with the neighbors. And uh, they have the link state request. So when one router wants to ask for uh, the LSA, the link state advertisement from another router, they will send out a link state request and uh, the link state update will be sent back. And, and then after they receive a link state message, actually the receiver will acknowledge the receipt of an LSA. So that's uh, several typical packet types. We will use all these type, uh, type of packets later on when we introduce the process of OSPF. Okay, besides all these concepts and the packet, there are also three kind of tables here. So one table is the neighbor table, okay? In OSPF, there is a, every router will maintain a neighbor table, which includes all his neighbor's information. We can use this command, display OSPF peer. Peer means the neighbor, okay? This command to check all the neighbor of a router. So this is the result of this command. So you can see that for router 1, a, his neighbor is router 2. And it is in area 0, and its interface is like this. The name of the interface is this one. And you can also see his designated router and also the retransmission interval. So we will talk about these different um, domains later on. Now you, you only need to know that uh, each router maintains a neighbor table to uh, maintain the information of neighboring. That's okay. Okay, the second type of table is called LSDB table. It is the link state database table. And in this table, uh, they stored a lot of uh, link state entries. So we can use this command to query the link state database. For example, this is the running result of this command. So you can see that for router one, the link state database is as follows. They have one link whose ID is 2222 and whose router, neighboring router is 2222. So this is this link, okay? And they have the metric of this link. So you can see that the metric is one. It means that the cost of this link is one. The bandwidth is 100 megabps, right? And they will have an age and length. So uh, after the several uh, times, it will be aged. And this link may not exist any longer. They will update it. The third type of table is the OSPF routing table. So the routing table actually is also maintained in every router. And the entry of the routing table is routing entry. Right? We have no what is routing entry. The routing entry actually uh, tells us for, for certain destination, which is the next hub router right? um, and what is the cost. So actually for router one, uh, if they want to go to, for example, go to this address, 2222, then definitely the next hub should be this interface, right? So the next hub is 10.1.1.2, this one. And the cost should be the cost of this link. We have known that this link has the cost of one. So this path will have the cost of one. Okay, so that's the OSPF routing table. 